My name is Julian Lodge, and I'm a jazz guitarist. I'm here in San Francisco at SF Jazz for my residency of four shows. What we're going to do here is see some footage of some of the great jazz guitarists of all time who've come through SF Jazz. It's an opportunity for me to witness them, enjoy them, take it in, and, and I guess respond, you know, and, and share my love of these artists and dive into that world, a world that I'm basically obsessed with. Carlos Santana is one of my heroes. I feel him as a big wave of support behind my back at all times. Um, I don't know if he knows that or not, but he's a huge, huge part of my life. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with him as a, you know, a new guitar player. He spoke to me. Um, the guitar in his hands felt like a, a voice and it had a story to tell. I was very fortunate when I was, I think, seven years old uh, to, to meet him. And it was, it was because my father at the time, worked at Fog City Diner here in San Francisco, and he had a friend who would come in and said, hey, Santana's coming to Shoreline Amphitheater. So if you want to come, just show up and you'll meet him. So my parents and I drove to Shoreline Amphitheater, knocked on the door, and he opened the door, and there's this kid, you know, and I'm there with my parents. So we'll come in and play with me. And he had two guitars, and we sat there, and it was fantastic. It was just a moment, but we played a blues or something. And Carlos was so gracious and supportive. And he said, you know, do you want to play tonight? Do you want to sit in on the show? And my parents and I kind of looked at each other and took a moment and said, no, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, that was terrifying to me. Keep in mind, I'd, I was playing guitar for a couple years. I didn't come prepared to do that. He said, no problem. Come back in a year. If you, if you have interest, we come here every year and, and you can sit in. So again, like a year later, knock on his door. And he says, oh, you came back. I was hoping you would. Do you want to play? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm ready this year. He said, okay, cool. So I sat in and played with him, and that was that. <laughs> Throughout my life, I've gone deeper into his playing, and I, I, I really cannot figure out how he reconciles um, so many styles and so many traditions of the guitar, uh, not only as an improviser, but as a composer, and as a band leader, and as an orchestrator. It's really... It's unlike anything else in the world. To watch that video, and especially in context with um, Cindy and with Modeski, who I know really well, um, it's, it's, it's a treat to see him kind of out of his usual context, I guess. And it still sounds like his effervescent voice. So I, it, that's a treat to see. He's the best. Okay. Who, what, is that, what band is he with? Is that Lettuce? No. Is it Lettuce? I feel like I saw that stream when it happened. I feel like I've seen it. Obviously, John Schofield is the, the master of all masters. I, I, I've been bugging John to play together for a long time. I've known him for, for many years at this point. And we've always been friends, and we've been on the same bill together, and we've taught together, and all sorts of things. And I, I would like nothing more than to play with John Schofield. Watching that, I'm just reminded that he's... He's the baddest. You know, there's so many attributes of Schofield's um, musicality that I think are really stunning. Obviously him as a singular voice as a guitar player. You know, no one sounds like him, no one touches an instrument like him. Schofield is one of the great conceptual artists. It's the guitar playing plus the phrasing language. It's very conversational, but it's not necessarily um, of a certain tradition. I mean, it's, 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 it's truly the definition of, a, of, of an icon, someone who figures out a new way. But I see him as such a full-fledged artist in that way, and he happens to play guitar. So it's, it's like a win for us as guitar players. You know, we get more than just a great guitar, so we get a whole artist. Bill's the best. His body of work as a composer is so sublime. 
I mean, there's there's so many songs. He's like Duke Ellington or somebody. Often it can feel intimidating to play his music if you're not him. And yet, when you bring his music to an ensemble, that let's say maybe he hasn't played it a bunch or as much as Bill, there's room for everybody. It's like a monk tune or something, or a Carla Blay song. It's really generous, just like the man himself. I feel lucky that we've become so close over the last five, ten years too. We're playing a lot of music together. He's one of my best friends. I, I just I love that person very much. I think one of the underpinnings of our connection is our friendship with Jim Hall. I think it's fair to say we're all still learning from Jim. I don't think we'll ever quite figure it all out, uh, which is fascinating and wonderful. At a certain point, Bill and I found ourselves playing a lot more together in Charles Lloyd's projects. We started doing a lot of John Zorn records together. That's like this whole other world that's not really jazz, but it's it's Zorn world. And then a few years ago, we made I made a record and I asked Bill to play on it and be a rhythm guitar player and orchestrator. And I was really shy about asking him to do it because I the last thing I'd want to do is is uh, be disrespectful and say, Hey, Bill, we do this record, but I don't really. You know, I don't envision you soloing on it. I just want you to make it all better. And my wife, Margaret, so wonderfully said, just just put it there. Just, if anyone knows you at this point, it's Bill. Just, and so we were together at a friend's house and I said, let me just, uh, just it sounds crazy, but would you play, and before I even finished the sentence, Bill said, yes, I would love to play rhythm guitar on your record. I thought, oh, what a relief. My hope, and I think this really happened, was that Bill would feel like I was um, celebrating him as an orchestrator. And from that session, we got two records. One is called the View with the Room, the other one's called The Layers. But it was it was a success. Like, it was it was really special. He's just kind of like a superhero to me, and, a, and absolutely a mentor. Um, and every time I'm with Bill, I learn a, a lot uh, about what it means to be a, a high-functioning, sensitive, interactive, improvising, um, risky, you know, adventurous musician. Um, which are all the traits I would attribute to my the greatest of all time. So for me, Bill is the top. That's the top. <music> Nels Klein, Lovers. That show wasn't mounted very often. I think it was here and at Newport and maybe in Los Angeles. Maybe somewhere else, but that's really cool that you got that captured. It wasn't until we were both in New York that um, we met through Jim Hall. Jim Hall would have these luncheons uh, at French Roast, which is a great restaurant in the city. It was usually a cast of characters. It would be, you know, Scott Cawley, Chris Potter, Dave Binney. One day we finally were at the same lunch and it was great. We all hit it off. It turned out that Nels was living about a block from Jim. So it was still in the West Village in that area. And so after lunch, Nels said, well, why don't you come back to my place and we'll, we'll I'll just show you where I live. You know, it's, it's like two little kids on the playground or something like, you want to come see my, Thing. Yeah, okay, I'll go, you know. It was so sweet and casual. We improvised for a little bit, and I remember immediately being struck with, whoa, this is special. This, I love this thing. It was only a minute, you know, but he called me, he said, that was great, thanks for coming over. He said, long shot, but there's this, this benefit at LPR in New York, La Puss on Rouge, this great club that we all play. Um, and I, I was gonna play solo, why don't we do a duo? And so when Nell said we'll go improvise for an hour set, I thought, I think I've been training my whole life for this, but never had the opportunity. So I got very excited. Sure enough, when we played the show, that's exactly what happened. I felt like this is full of every, every technique I've ever worked on was so that I could express myself in this context. That basically just flipped a switch in my brain where I said, I need to pursue this music. And it wasn't long after that that we started doing duo tours together. We made a duo record together. Throughout all this period, Nels was dreaming of, yeah, I think he had this idea for many years, but he was talking about actually seeing this Lovers Project come to fruition, which is an orchestral project with guitar at the center, playing these kind of, these love songs that are beautiful ballads, and, and they, they run the gamut from traditional standards to a sonic youth song, to songs that, you know, Jim Hall made famous, to a Jimmy Jufrey number, to a Annette Peacock piece. I mean, it, was, it really is a constellation of what makes Nels Nels. And it was one of the most enjoyable, beautiful things to see grow, especially because of how our relationship started and to see it, to just be by his side as a friend while this happened, it was like watching someone give birth or something. It was really, Sublime. Cheryl Bailey is just an incredible guitarist who I've known as a fan, but only met her about a year ago. 
and, and we were teaching together at a camp in upstate New York. And it was the first time we had just kind of, I guess, gotten to know one another. I'm, I'm just, I'm a great admirer of her music. She has this ability to articulate what actually goes into creating a voice and creating a sound and being a master of the instrument. We had one other occasion um, to be together at Berklee College of Music where they were doing a tribute to Mick Goodrick. It was actually right before Mick passed away. Mick Goodrick was my guitar teacher and I, believe, I think hers as well. Again, it was the same experience. I just thought, this person is amazing. I want to know more about them. Seeing her play there, it's, she's epic. She's an incredible soloist, such a clear vision. Her execution, everything is just like, it's laser-like. It embodies that same clarity that I get from her as a teacher. You know, there's just nothing extra, it's just pure. Here we go with Jimmy Bryant, Speedy West, and Fly It High. <laughs> So Speedy West and Jimmy Bryan are, are essential to the development of the guitar and electric guitar and just guitar in American culture and, and, and their influence is so heavy and amazing. And very specifically, Jimmy Bryan playing Telecaster there is kind of my guide as far as the tonal palette and how to use a Telecaster. I mean, Jimmy Bryan is, is the, that's the best to me. Um, and I, I couldn't tell you why, <laughs> but I, I just, I've always been in love with his touch, his tone, and the, the no choices he makes on the instrument and how fluorescent what he's playing despite having a rather austere sound. When you see Jimmy playing a Telecaster, which is the guitar I choose to play as well, it's fun to keep in mind that he was the one almost trying out these instruments when they were prototypes. He was the one making suggestions about what could be improved and what worked, what didn't. Um, so you're kind of watching not only a guitar player, but you're watching an innovator. We wouldn't have the guitars we have without that guy. It's really important to understand, regardless of how he played. Egberto's a bad dude. A theme through a lot of what we've been talking about is guitarists who are also artists, you know, and, and not to say that any guitarist isn't an artist, but people who really foster that side of the of it. So they're they're players, but they're also innovators, and they also structure compositions differently, and they also this different and that differently. I think Egberto is one of the leading examples, of like for many generations now, of players who really hold something together that's unthinkably innovative and brilliant and soulful and puzzling and just transcendent, you know? Um, so my experience with him is always from afar on record. That's why, I, I, to be honest, I've never watched a video of him or seen him live, so it's such a treat to watch him. It feels like I could just watch him sit there and I'd be probably uh, captivated. You know, you just see his brain working and just, I don't know, it's, it's incredible. For as abstract as the harmony can feel, it always has forward motion. There's always the sense that you're moving towards, so there's a narrative unfolding. Um, and it's mind boggling. I, I don't know how he does it. Mr. Matheny. That's what well, was one of my teachers, you know, growing up. Um, I love watching him play. It's, it's endlessly uh, illuminating. And especially him playing a ballad like that and his decisions about voice leading, harmonies that have a tonal center but kind of move freely. He, he writes songs that move freer than just about anybody. I could watch that all day. I met Pat when I was very young, eight or so, nine or so. And Randy Vincent, my teacher and his wife, Kathy Vincent, they took me to a show of his in Santa Rosa. And I think Kathy sent a note back uh, to the effect of, um, there's a kid who wants to meet you. And so we kind of loitered around the stage after the show was over, it was an amazing concert. I don't know, 30, 40 minutes later, Pat walked out and it was similar to my experience with Santana, but he walked out with two guitars, like ready to play. And I don't know how I was so lucky to find myself in this situation. It blew my mind, it changed my life completely. Um, it validated that this is a thing that people do and there's something to shoot for, you know, to, to that level. Um, of greatness. Um, and then he would come in, in, in uh, years after through the Bay Area and I'd always see him and take a lesson with him. Pat's the greatest. 
band leader, improviser, um, composer, conceptual artist, everything is there. But all I can speak to personally is his, his kindness, you know, um, it's a big inspiration to me. And he's done that not just for me, but for so many people, been an emblem of what it means to be a jazz guitar player, an improvising guitar player in modern times. You know, what does that look like? When you have a connection to a lineage such as jazz guitar and American music, and to um, black music, African American music, and the root, whether it be blues, gospel, whatever it is, when you're connected to this tree of life, you know, and vitality, the music can reach over any genre and reach and connect people to one another in a way that's really what the world needs. So I think of him as kind of like a healing force, and uh, it comes through in his music. He gave me a, a book once, and he, and he wrote Humility. He said the most important word to keep in mind at all times is I wrote down in, in this book. Kind of a pillar of Pat's world is for as amazing as he is, he's coming from a place of curiosity, from a place of not having the answers and wanting to genuinely get better at the craft, to genuinely dive deeper than anyone's gone before. Um, and it is humbling to be around that kind of humility, truly. Um, so I think that's the thing is like, there's all, you can always go deeper, you can always get better. The feel can always be a little bit stronger. It's not so much humility that you kind of remove yourself from taking a, a stance, um, but it's it's kind of both. Like if you're gonna boldly go where no one's gone and you have a point of view, great, and make sure you uncover all that you don't know. And uh, I think that's that that's a pretty succinct way of putting it. Hey everyone, Terrence Blanchard here. Thanks for watching this video. If you dug it, be sure to give it a like or leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got lots more videos coming out soon. Last note, if you want to watch some amazing concerts filmed at our venue, head over to our website and check out SF Jazz at Home. Thanks for your support and stay tuned.